February's blogs, Valentine's Day month, we had to go with self-love. And really self-intimacy, learning to love oneself is the first step in sharing love with others. Yeah. And I love these posts the most. <laughs> I know I say that every month, but Laura, your post really was, uh, it hit me right here. Ah. Uh. Thank you. Thank you. I've been struggling to find my voice as a writer, you know, to get to the real essence of me. And I just let it loose. I cried while I wrote this. I really just got into the memory of my experiences. And, and you always say, Carolyn, bleed on the page. I felt like I bled on the page with this one. <laughs> um, yeah. And it really, this, this post really meant a lot to me. This is my favorite line. Deep down, I knew that my body was unlovable and so was I. I would never be good enough for love. Yeah. Oh, oh we all struggle with that. And I think as women, that's the hardest kind of life lesson that to learn that, you know, we have to love ourselves first, that we're never going to get the validation from others. Mm -hmm. And I learned in my process, I couldn't love myself until I loved my body. Um, and, and it was a process to get to that place. I mean, I'm not saying it was easy, uh, but, but yeah, I, I'm there now. And it's, it's a journey. It's, I'm still growing in self-love, but I don't have to be perfect to be loved. None of us do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, I really liked Lakota's piece too. I felt hers was a bookend to mine because she has a different body type, but she still struggled with loving her body. Um, our favorite line from hers is, I did everything I could at different intervals in my life to mute my body for others. So she had the pressure of being the ideal, mm -hmm. the petite, very thin. So what did she get? She got the opposite. Oh, are you eating? Mm -hmm. Right? When she was pregnant, it's like, oh, you have to eat for the baby. They just assume you're not eating and that's her body type. Right. Right. And it's interesting how at both ends of the spectrum, no matter what we are, we're criticized because Carolyn, your body was the ideal. And you I'm criticized. in the middle. Yeah. Right. I can just tell you right now, yeah. I didn't get anything for it either. Uh, that's the point mm -hmm. is that if we criticize women's bodies, we disconnect them from the, their power. Our, the relationship we have with our bodies mm -hmm. is the, the single biggest influence on our mental and emotional health. Mm -hmm. And then we have Tasha's post, um, where she shares a very specific, uh, reaction to the scent of her body. Uh, and, and she was able to appreciate her scent. And that was her gateway to self-love. So our favorite line, I took his hand again, closed my eyes, and deeply inhaled my vulva scent. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. You know, Betty did that every morning. She would wake up and she would put her hands in between her, her inner thighs mm -hmm. and kind of rub on her vulva and go... Mm -hmm. And she'd always go, oh, Carlin, I just love the way I smell. And it was such a beautiful moment of self-love. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that whole industry about deodorizing our vaginas and our vulvas and that we have to smell a certain way. But really that natural pheromone, musky yes. <laughs> vulva odor. Mm, it's very appealing. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, you've seen me in the circle. I'm, I'm not shy about <laughs> about smelling. <laughs> but but it is that can be a real block to connecting with our bodies because we're we're told that we're not supposed that doesn't smell nice. Use deodorizers. Yeah. That's why in the circle, we always do the smell. You, you know, you penetrate yourself and then you taste it. And you smell it. And that's the whole point. A woman was sharing how she thought that she didn't smell good with the lover and she was nervous about it. And Betty being Betty just looked at her and said, well, why don't you just smell? Let's mm -hmm. smell it right now. You're right. And let's all do it. And we want, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a little salty, a little briny, a little musky, depending on where we are in the month. But it's a very subtle smell and taste. Mm -hmm. Another post 
that deals with body connection was from Lisa. And I love Lisa's writing style because you feel like you're right there. And she inserts humor. um, And then she grew up a very conservative Christian and thought that she would get everything she wanted if she was the good girl and the good wife and the good mother. Um, But, oh gosh, that one, that one is great. I think that one is my favorite this month. Um, So her line is, I had never put my hands on my body, skin to skin. Yes. We would see this all the time in the workshop. Think about that. I don't think I've ever met a man that didn't have his hand on his penis because they have to, Mm -hmm. right? To go to the bathroom or to clean. But so many women would say, I've never touched myself. Mm -hmm. Take your hand and touch your body. Right. And then I love when she goes on to talk about how she was having this breakdown and she watched one of our videos and it was on, I think, lubricant or, or vibrators. Yeah. And she grabbed the vibrator and she was kind of angry in the beginning, like, why are you making me do this? <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, Betty was that little devil on her shoulder. Right. <laughs> saying it's okay to masturbate with the vibrator. I love it. I, I do. I love the whole thing. So yes, I mean, read that one. It's just, it's, it's fantastic. And I think very relatable. Um, the next one, this is really another favorite, really um, Emily's is neck and neck with Lisa's. Uh, she just, she is such a good writer uh, in the imagery and she just kind of takes you along on this journey. And it starts out, with a relationship with a fiance and how that turned into creating a relationship with herself and falling in love with herself. Um, this, this was a really great line. I hadn't noticed that I pitted my desire to be a mother against my queerness. (sighs) Yeah. And it was important to put this in the time when she was going through this, Mm -hmm. that, gay marriage wasn't even legal. Yeah. So the whole idea that if you were queer and gay, you had to make a choice and you just couldn't become a parent. That was real. Right. Right. You know, now we go, Oh, what's the big deal? You can be married and and you can do that. Yeah. That's not the way it was. And that inner struggle, mm-hmm. you know, and oh, it was so beautiful to see her get on the other side of that. Right. Right. And in many ways that makes me think it's connected to Lisa's too, because it's societal expectations about relationships. Right. Mm-hmm. And what we're supposed to do really probably all of our blog posts are about societal expectations um, and fighting our way through that to get to self-love because that's a block. Well, you know, good girls. Right or side dates. Mm-hmm. They never <laughs> smell themselves. They never want to eat pussy. Right. <laughs> they never vibrate. They never give themselves orgasm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. We're all bad. Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we're all human. Right. right. And we have needs and desires. Mm-hmm. Yes. And for me, that's what self-love is about. It's about acknowledging my own personal needs and desires mm-hmm. And that when I make that connection, guess what? I'm I'm more generous with everyone around me. Exactly. Exactly. And I think one of the hardest places to stand up for ourselves is in a relationship. Mm-hmm. And that's where we come to Jen's blog post because she writes about being in a relationship and um, they were swingers, um, ethical non-monogamy with, with her first husband relationship. And she wanted to be polyamorous. And so she stood up for herself. Um, Her line is, I wanted true intimacy with more than one person. I wanted more love in my life, not just more sex. Yes. And I think that when we're not in that monogamy model, we go right to sex parties and swingers, right? And that's not really what we're looking for. We're looking for intimacy. Mm -hmm. Right. And I love that distinction that Jen made Mm -hmm. because she was having all the sex and it wasn't fulfilling Mm -hmm. because if you're not having sex on your terms and getting what you want out of it, why are you even bothering, (laughs) you know? And when she had that breakdown, she's like, I'm done. You know, I think Betty used to always say, we have to get in touch with our anger. Mm -hmm. Listen to the body. When you're having strong reaction to something and you don't know why it's like connect to that. 
I'm having a strong reaction because it's wrong for mm-hmm. me. 